Hi everyone, this lesson is on weird or atypical signs and symptoms of colon cancer, which is also known as colorectal cancer. So before we talk about those weird signs and symptoms, let's talk about what colon cancer is. So colon cancer is going to be a cancer of the large intestine and or rectum. So the large intestine is going to be this part of the gastrointestinal system here, and this is the rectum. So it can involve any part of the large intestine and rectum. It is the third to fourth most common type of cancer. And the risk factors for getting colon cancer include the following. Older age, low fiber intake, family history, and history of IBD or inflammatory bowel disease like ulcerative colitis. Some other risk factors can include alcohol consumption as well. Now the typical symptoms for having colon cancer include abdominal pain, bowel habit changes, it can either involve alterations between constipation and or diarrhea. There can also be stool caliber changes. So we may see something called a pencil shaped stool. So if you have a very large obstruction in the colon, stool passing by that obstruction can become smaller in caliber. So the diameter of the stool becomes small. That can happen with colon cancer as well. And then there can also be weight loss and fatigue and some other non-specific findings as well. So there can be some significant weight loss and fatigue with these patients. But we're going to talk about weird or atypical signs and symptoms in this lesson. And these are going to be more rare, but some of them can be more common, which we'll discuss here in a moment. Now let's discuss some of those weird or atypical symptoms. So some weird symptoms of colon cancer can include abdominal distension. So abdominal distension is going to be a distended abdomen. So a distended abdomen can look something like this. So your abdomen can become very protruded. This is due to a bowel obstruction. So you can imagine that if you have a large cancer, so you have a big tumor or a big growth inside your large intestine, it can become so large that it can block the entire lumen or the entire tube of the large intestine. If you were to block that entirely, then nothing can pass through that obstruction. And then we can get air and gastric contents that start to build up. So you can get gastrointestinal contents building up throughout the large intestine into the small intestine. This can also involve air as well. So you get this big protruded abdomen. We also see obstipation and constipation if you have a bowel obstruction. So obstipation is where you're not passing any gas and constipation is you're not passing any stool. So again, if you have a very large obstruction, especially something that's more distal or farther down the gastrointestinal system, then we can have a large buildup of contents back through the system. So this would be a large bowel obstruction and can cause a very protruded abdomen or distended abdomen. Along with the abdominal distension, we can see nausea and vomiting. So nausea and vomiting is itself due to a large bowel obstruction. So because of that blockage in the large intestine, that large bowel obstruction, we have a buildup of gastrointestinal contents and we get reduced gastrointestinal motility. So contents are not moving through the system anymore. Eventually the gastric emptying slows down as well. So this is where contents in the stomach empty into the small intestine. Because the small intestine is full of contents, the stomach's not emptying properly. So this is going to lead to a backup of contents in the stomach as well, leading to nausea. And in some cases, we can get vomiting as well. So again, all the backing up of gastrointestinal contents can lead to nausea and vomiting due to those reasons we just mentioned. Some other weird or atypical symptoms of colon cancer include something called tenismus. So tenismus is a frequent urge to defecate. And we can also see sensation of incomplete evacuation. So if you've used the washroom, you may still feel like you have to go even though you don't. We can also see rectal pressure or pain as well. And all of this has to do with a colorectal cancer involving the rectum. So there's cancer in the rectum. This can lead to pressure in the rectum and a feeling that you need to defecate even though you don't have to. We can also see issues with melina and hematochesia. So melina is a black tarry stool. It's often considered very smelly as well. And hematochesia is a bright red blood in the stool. So the reason that we can see melina and hematochesia is because of bleeding from a cancerous lesion. Now these are actually more common of symptoms, although they're not thought about sometimes when we think about colon cancer. So bleeding in your stool or a black tarry stool is going to be important findings. Melina is going to be usually due to a cancer that's more proximal. So if it's involving the right ascending colon or the right colon, so farther away from the rectum, this can lead to melina. Melina is going to be 
where blood has been digested, at least partially. So this is going to lead to that black tarry stool. And if the cancer is closer to the rectum, so closer to the exit of the stool, this is going to usually involve hematochesia or bright red blood. So those are the differences between the two. Now, along with this bleeding, we can see iron deficiency anemia. So this can be due to either the overt blood loss we just talked about in melina and hematochesia, or it can be due to occult blood, meaning that the bleeding or the blood loss is not observable or it's hidden. So if you're losing blood, it's going to lead to a consumption of iron due to increased hematopoiesis. So hematopoiesis is a synthesis or a production of red blood cells. So if you're losing red blood cells, your body's going to compensate by making more red blood cells. But in the process of doing that, it's going to consume iron. And because of that, we're going to lose iron. We're going to lead to iron deficiency anemia. So this is a reason why we can see iron deficiency anemia in colon cancer patients. Very important finding for our patients. And along with iron deficiency anemia, we can see signs and symptoms of iron deficiency anemia. There are particular signs and symptoms of iron deficiency anemia. So along with symptoms of anemia, like shortness of breath or fatigue or pallor, we can also see signs and symptoms like angular chelitis. So a cracking, inflamed lips. So corners of the lips become cracked and inflamed. We can also see something called coilonychia, so spoon-shaped nails. We can also see issues with an association with restless leg syndrome as well. So there are some particular and interesting findings we can see with iron deficiency anemia. If you want more information, please check out my lesson on that topic. Now, another more weird symptom that's going to be more rare and something that we don't often think about with colon cancer is endocarditis. So endocarditis is going to be an inflammation of the endocardium of the heart. We can also see along with endocarditis, a bacteremia, so bacteria in the blood. So it's a bacterial infection. And this is going to be due to infection with the bacteria known as Streptococcus bovis, which is also known as Streptococcus galloliticus. So this bacteria resides in the large intestine. And if we have a cancerous growth in the large intestine, this bacteria can escape past the large intestinal wall and get into the bloodstream and cause infection and cause endocarditis. So this is going to be very important if we see a bacteremia with Streptococcus bovis or an endocarditis due to this bacteria, we have to think about colon cancer because this is the bacterial infection that's associated with colon cancer. And another infection I want to mention here is gas gangrene. So gas gangrene can actually occur in patients with colon cancer as well due to an infection with Clostridium septicum. So Clostridium septicum infections can occur in individuals who have colon cancer, which can lead to gas gangrene. So please check out my full lesson on gas gangrene if you want more information. We can also see issues with diverticulitis in patients who have colon cancer. So in some cases, the patient may have colon cancer, but it may appear like diverticulitis. So diverticulitis is inflammation of diverticulate. And diverticular are these little bulges, these weakened parts of the wall of the large intestine. And another very important point to make note of here is that having diverticular disease, and more specifically, having a past episode of acute diverticulitis or multiple past episodes of acute diverticulitis substantially increases your risk for colon cancer. So the inflammation of the diverticula in that area of the colon or the large intestine can increase your risk for colon cancer. So also something to point out here as well. And in some patients, we may also see hepatomegaly. So hepatomegaly is an enlarged liver. This is often due to metastasis to the liver. So there can be cancer cells that leave the large intestine from the cancer in the large intestine or the cancer in the colon. So cells can leave, enter into the liver. So this would be metastatic colorectal carcinoma. So it'd be stage four colon cancer. And the liver is actually a common site for this to occur. And along with hepatomegaly, we can see ascites as well. So ascites is going to be this big swollen abdomen. So your abdomen is full of fluid. This may be due to liver dysfunction. So if you have issues with your liver functioning, so if there's a lot of metastases in the liver, this can lead to liver dysfunction. Your liver produces albumin. If you don't make enough albumin, we can have issues with ascites. Or it can be due to metastases to the peritoneum, which can then lead to abdominal fluid leakage or a fluid accumulation. So this can occur from metastases to the peritoneum as well. And then there are some dermatological findings of colon cancer. I also want to briefly mention here, one of them is going to be acanthosis nigricans. This is where there's thickened hyperpigmented skin lesions. So it can look like this. So these skin lesions, these velvety skin lesions can occur 
in intertriginous areas and areas where skin meets skin. So some common areas can include the axillae or the armpits and the groin as well. And it's also found in other medical conditions. So not only can we see this in colon cancer, but we can see this in cases of insulin resistance, so cases of polycystic ovary syndrome or type 2 diabetes. These can be some of the more common conditions where we can see acanthosis nigricans. So colon cancer is going to be something we would think of less likely to cause this. And then something else I also want to make note of here is something called a lesser trela sign. And lesser trela sign is going to be a sudden onset of many seborrheic keratoses. So seborrheic keratoses are these skin lesions that are usually very numerous. They look like they've are something that's been stuck onto someone's skin. They can look very ominous, but they're actually very benign and they can occur in patients who get older, generally speaking. So they can look very bad, but they're generally benign. But it's also very important to check each of those just to make sure that they may not be melanoma, for instance. But with lesser trela sign, if you have colon cancer, you can all of a sudden just have a sudden onset of many of these seborrheic keratoses all of a sudden. Generally speaking, if it's due to old age, it's a slow onset. But if it's due to colon cancer, it can be a sudden onset of many of them. And the difference with seborrheic keratoses due to colon cancer is that they are pruritic, meaning that they're itchy. This is something that doesn't happen with normal seborrheic keratoses. Normal seborrheic keratoses are not itchy unless they're irritated due to clothing or something that's rubbing on them. But with these ones, they're going to be itchy. So sudden onset of many of these types of skin lesions that are itchy. And also we can see a rapid increase in size of them and number of lesions. So not only can they just pop up very quickly, but they can increase in size very quickly. And then the number of them can continue to increase as well. So that is lesser trela sign. Very important finding in colon cancer. If you want more information on other skin findings of colon cancer or other signs and symptoms of colon cancer, please check my lessons on those topics. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.